This one concept will change how you edit your photos forever. Now, although fundamental to photography, this concept is rarely discussed in the photographic community when it comes to photo editing. And until you master it, editing your photos can be a challenge. But in this video, I'm going to reveal this one concept, how it affects your images and how to use it to improve your images in any photo editing app. In fact, if you watch 100% of this video, I guarantee photo editing will be easier and you'll improve your images. Hello, I'm Chris Parker with parkerphotographic.com and I'm here to help you elevate your photographic skills. And if you're ready, let's do it. So what is the one concept? Light. I know it's not earth shattering, but if you don't understand how you and your camera see the light differently, editing an image will be a greater challenge than needed. So everything you need to know about how to edit your image starts with light. For example, let's take a look at some basic edits you can do in Lightroom and about every other photo editing app on the market. So in the basics panel here, we have a section or a category called tone. So this includes your exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, whites, and blacks. Now these same edits are available in popular photo editing apps also like On One, Luminar Neo, Affinity Photo, etc. But what is tone? So what happens when you adjust the tones or which ones should you adjust? All of them or only one or two and why? Now, more importantly, how much should you adjust them? Should you adjust them to plus or minus 50 or plus or minus 85 or plus 100? So these questions and more I'm going to cover in this video tutorial. So I'm going to give you some pro tips on which of the tones you should adjust and when and why and how much in just a moment. First, let's dig a little deeper into light and how it relates to tones. In essence, Photographic light refers to how a light source illuminates the scene and subjects. And the intensity of the light can vary throughout a scene and the time of day. In nature, the various intensities of light are infinite and they're known as the dynamic range, which is similar but different from tones or the tonal range. But as mortal humans, our eyes can only see 21 levels out of the infinite levels of light or the various intensities of light at one time. Now, these levels are known as stops or stops of light. Now, if you're wondering what this has to do with photo editing, well, everything. And just give me a few more moments to explain and you'll see how this will improve your photo editing. I should also point out that this is the bare fundamentals of light and I go into greater detail about it in my free photography course that I've linked to in the description below. Okay, so your camera is even more limited than your eyes and depending on your camera, it can capture seven to 14 stops of light. So the intensity levels that your camera captures are known as the tonal range. Within that tonal range, we can divide the stops of light into five categories, the same ones I mentioned before. Exposure, which is also the midtones, highlight shadows, whites, and blacks. Okay, so once you create an image, you have what is known as an exposure. And your exposure is how bright or dark your image is. Then in your photo editing app of choice, you can make your tones brighter or darker to shape the light intensity based on your creative vision. Now, the most difficult part of editing your tones is figuring out which ones to adjust since you don't need to always adjust all of them. And then you have to decide how much of an adjustment. So here are some pro tips for editing your tones. Now, depending on your photo editing software, you may have one or more different tools 
to make it easier to utilize and get the most out of your tone adjustments so you're not over editing. However, I'll have one tool that rules above them all since it gives you a graphical representation of your tones and it's known as your histogram. All right, as I hover over the histogram in different parts, you're gonna see that tone section light up with this light gray box and then the name of that tone section is listed right down here in the bottom left. So on the left side, we have our black tones followed by the shadows, the exposure or the midtones, the highlights, and then the whites. Now the histogram graph is plotting how many pixels for that level of light intensity is visible inside of your image. And this creates the peaks and valleys in your histogram. Now on the left side, the peak in the blacks is taller than all the other tones. So this tells us that there's a lot of pixels that represent detail in that part of the tonal range. Now, based on that information, we should be able to brighten the blacks and the shadows to reveal the details in that part of the image, which would be the lower two thirds of this image that I captured at Letchworth State Park in New York. So let's go ahead and try it out. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and increase the shadows to plus 100 and the blacks to plus 100 as well. And that is going to reveal and show the trees and the Genesee River running through and cutting out the gorge. Now, those were difficult to see before, but with these adjustments, it allows us to see those details. But the image doesn't look all that great, does it? And the reason why is there's one fundamental thing you should know about these tone adjustments, and that is the amount of contrast is altered the more of the edit that you apply, which is why we have a contrast adjustment slider to add or decrease the amount of contrast based on the tone adjustments that you apply. So these two adjustments, shadows and blacks, reduced the contrast and now the image is flat. So if I increase the contrast to the right to add more contrast to let's say plus 40 to plus 45, that adds just enough back into my image based on my personal preference. Overall though, it's still a little flat and underexposed. So my next option is to adjust either the whites and or the midtones or the exposure. So if you're unsure which one to use, let your histogram tell you which one. So for this image, there isn't any peaks or valleys of information in the whites and there's a little teeny tiny gap right here. So in most instances, depending on the light in the scene and your creative vision, you may want to have detail in every tonal range from the blacks all the way to the end here with the whites. And I'm going to fix that by increasing the whites. So I'm going to push this histogram to the right to add some more detail in here and to get rid of that gap. And as I do, it's going to brighten the image and you don't want to go too far. Otherwise, you're going to start clipping detail. Now, depending on your photo editing app of choice, there should be tools inside of it to help you visually see that you're clipping detail. In Lightroom, we have a white clipping mask right here. Once you turn it on, it will then show that red overlay, which represents an area of the image or the tones being overexposed. So anything in red has zero detail. And if I turn on the black point clipping mask, if I reduce the blacks to minus 100, you're gonna see this blue overlay, and then you can adjust your settings according to that overlay to ensure you're not clipping any detail. Of course, I had this at plus 100, but it's not necessarily what I would do for my editing. This is just the basic fundamentals to get you on the right track of editing your tones so you can begin shaping the light based on your creative vision. So I'm also going to drop the whites down to right around plus 55, and I still have a little teeny tiny bit of overexposure in the clouds right here. 
So I may want to bring this back even further until that's gone. But personally, I like to drop this even more to right around plus 35 or so for this particular image. Now remember, there's a cause and effect. And when I increased the whites, I added more contrast. I can also add more contrast by adjusting the blacks to the left. So I would recommend adjusting your contrast last once you have your highlight shadows, whites, blacks, and your exposures or the midtones set to where you want them. And then you can increase the contrast or decrease it if needed based on your creative vision. Now, the other thing I may want to do is I may want to darken the highlights because right now the highlights are dominating even though it's a smaller portion of the image. And that's because our eyes tend to gravitate to parts of the image that are brighter. And right now the highlights are too bright. So I can darken those with the highlights to the left. And as you can see, as I drag it to the left, it's making it darker. And now it's a lot more equal to the rest of the image in terms of the level of intensity of light. Now, just because I have these edits done doesn't necessarily mean I like this particular edit, which I don't. And that's because this isn't my photographic style. This isn't how I like to edit my images, tones in particular. So this is the hardest part of editing, finding our photographic style. And it's not something that you're going to be able to figure out in one video tutorial or even dozens. It's going to take time and practice with these different adjustments, not just the tonal values here, but all of these adjustments in order to achieve your creative vision. Let me show you my final edit for this image. So to me, this is 10 times better than this image here. There's more depth, more contrast. The color saturation is better. The colors pop. There's more detail. Everything about this edit to me is 10 times better than this one. But I've also applied additional edits above and beyond the tone adjustments here. So this is the beginning step. If you're not quite sure where to start with your tones, if you're still confused, I highly recommend pushing this auto button right here. So let's go ahead and do that with this image here. And you're going to notice that the adjustments that Lightroom is going to apply are completely different from what we did here. So I'm going to go ahead and click auto and boom, Lightroom has auto magically edited our image. So if you're new to editing, I recommend starting with the auto button and then you can adjust these based on your creative vision. And eventually in time, in practice, you will hone in your skills and your photographic style during that time of learning how to use Lightroom. Now, if you want to continue elevating your editing in Lightroom, check out this Lightroom editing playlist. Or if you want to improve your photography skills, check out this photography playlist.